We're going to study exchanges in a little more detail and depth. In fact, within economic theory, we're now going to get into a sub-discipline or subset, which is the general theory of exchange, also known as catalaxy, from the Greek word katalatein, which means to exchange. We're going to concentrate on exchanges because they define the quintessential social relationship. According to Mises, there are two types of exchanges. We'll call one intrapersonal exchanges, and we'll call the other interpersonal exchanges. Intrapersonal exchanges are also called autistic, autistic exchanges. We all know how autistic children behave, don't we? They withdraw into themselves and seem detached from the outside world. Well, all those actions in which we do not rely on other human beings at all are called intrapersonal, within one human being. The actions Robinson Crusoe performs alone on his island are autistic exchanges. When Robinson Crusoe decides to stop hunting in order to build himself a hut, he is making a sort of exchange between two alternatives open to him. But the exchange does not involve other human beings. He stops hunting in favor of his decision to build a hut. Another typical example, both Mises and Kirzner often give it, is that of a lone, isolated hunter who must constantly make decisions. He needs to either chase an animal or not chase it, etc. These actions are intrapersonal or autistic exchanges. Well, you can consider them as important as you wish, but from a social standpoint, the truly crucial actions, the most important by far, are not these, but ones we'll call interpersonal exchanges. Interpersonal exchanges consist of giving something to others in order to receive from them in return what one needs. Thus, they are actions that involve two or more human beings. And they are reflected in the old Latin adage from Roman law, do at des. Do, I give, at, so that, des, you give to me. This Latin expression perfectly captures the essence of an interpersonal exchange. A do at des. I give to you, so that you will give to me. In fact, the interpersonal exchange relationship between two human beings is the quintessential social relationship. Today we're going to study exchanges in depth, but I would like you to visualize and understand that all human interactions can ultimately be reduced to exchanges. Even when a person seems to expect nothing in return, there is an exchange. When Mother Teresa of Calcutta wanted to help a needy person without expecting anything in return, an exchange did take place within her, because what gave her satisfaction was helping those in need. It's true that the exchange was intrapersonal. As is logical, all commercial transactions which involve monetary units are exchanges, as are barter transactions, exchanges without money. We'll talk about those right away. Nevertheless, all human interactions in the sphere of friendship are exchanges as well. When we have a friend we're comfortable with, and we like to go out with that person, and we tell each other our problems, there is an exchange relationship between us, even if the other person merely listens to us and gives us his or her time. Many times, all we need is someone to listen to our problems and give us a shoulder to cry on. After we've rattled on for a while, even if we haven't let the other person get a word in edgewise, we feel better and we go home relieved. We may even give our friend a pat on the back and a thank you. What a great conversationalist you are. What do you mean, conversationalist? You haven't let me say a single word. The exchange relationship between the sexes is also very clear. Each gives to the other. In fact, the exchange in any relationship you can think of will be more obvious or less, and the necessary analysis may be more abstract or less, but something is always given and something is always received.